Hi, it's Jessica Stone at Stansbury Research, and I've got Scott Garlis here from the Stansbury Newswire. Scott, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, there's so much coverage of the Fed, and all week long we're seeing Federal Reserve officials and governors go out kind of pounding the pavement, explaining what the Federal Reserve is doing to bring back the U.S. economy. But when we hear this phrase, the Fed, the Federal Reserve is uncertain about the economic recovery, uh, is that, um, how do you interpret that? You know, look, uh, Powell's job as the Fed chairman is to be conservative. Uh, he does not want to get people overly fired up, investors overly fired up, and creating a, sort of a bubble in the stock markets, the debt markets, wherever. So like his predecessors before him, uh, you know, I would point to Alan Greenspan. Uh, just what he is, it's Fed speak, and he's just being conservative and erring on the side of caution. So when we take him literally in the media, are we getting the story right? You know, I don't think the media is getting the story right. I think the media is sort of dwelling on that one point and they're missing the bigger picture story, which is the Fed isn't going to go anywhere. They, they, they basically keep telling us they've got the economies back. And if it's necessary, they will keep introducing facility after facility until they can get growth back to where it was pre-pandemic. Yeah, there's a commitment there that we hear from uh, Fed Chief Powell every time he's up on the Hill. Um, one of the things that was interesting about the testimony on Tuesday was that he got some personal thank yous from members of Congress for the adjustments that were announced recently on inflation targets. I'm not at all exaggerating when I say this new framework is the most important thing that's happened in monetary policy, indeed in economic policy in 40 years in this country. So thank you, Chairman Powell very much for the new framework. Can you talk us through why that is such a momentous change? So what Powell said, by using an inflation target, what they'd be willing to do is let the economy run hot, which means run over their 2% inflation target for longer than they may have in the past because it's underperformed for so long. So that means the Fed won't be quick to pull the rug out from under the market in the future. You know, you've been a Fed watcher for a while, first on Wall Street, now at Stansbury Research. What do you make of what the Fed is doing and the job they're doing? You know what, uh, long term, we'll see what happens in terms of all this money being thrown in the system. But, but for now, I think what the Fed is doing is, is pretty incredible. Um, the Fed is taking the experience of what happened you know, 10, 11 years ago during the financial crisis, and they didn't waste any time employing it. Uh, one of the things that Powell recently talked about was the amount of asset purchases they're doing. He said it's going to run at at least $120 billion for the foreseeable future. He noted that was more than what they did during the financial crisis, yet the media turned around after he made these comments during the policy release last week and said the Fed won't stand up for how long they're going to be purchasing all these assets. It, it, it sort of baffles me that they'd say that, but that was the take that they, they came away with. Earlier this week, we heard from James Bullard, who said there might not even be a need for more fiscal stimulus, which is what Congress would pass. That seems to be uh, very much in counterpoint to what we heard, what we are hearing from Fed Chief Powell, who says we do still need stimulus from Congress. What do you make of that? Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. Uh, so Bullard is pretty much the only person at the Fed right now that is saying that. Everyone else is encouraging Congress to enact more stimulus. The fact that Bullard has been way ahead of the game and was calling for rate cuts long before anybody else did and was optimistic on the economic rebound that we were going to see or now seeing when everybody else was taking a much more dour outlook, I think it speaks volumes when that guy says, we don't need more stimulus. So that tells me the economy is in a really good spot. And again, you know, if I'm going to get my car fixed, I'm going to take the word of a mechanic versus somebody that's just taking a shot in the dark. And I look at Bullard as that mechanic. And so that runs in direct contrast to the main message we keep reading about the economy, which is that recovery is sluggish, unemployment is still high. Um, these are not the same messages that you certainly have come away with. Why, why do you differ so clearly from uh, what we're seeing in the financial press? So these guys are telling us they, they have the back of the economy. And if they have the back of the economy, that means they have the back of the stock market. So. As an investor, I take a lot of solace in that, and I'm okay with owning shares of companies that, are, that have good product and are going to have good earnings, and the recent pullback is probably providing a buying opportunity. All right. Scott Garlis there from the Newswire. We appreciate your time. And if you want to be connected to the Stansbury Newswire, 
We'll give you a link right now and a hover link. And you can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thanks for watching. That's all for now.